How will the Wexford Herders get on this season? Brought to you by OrgaRetro.com. If you want to get these jerseys like this Wexford 96 number, the old Connolly Sports vibe and it all, go to OrgaRetro.com put in the promo code ARGAIN. Michael Verney, fourth season for Davy Fitz. They won the Leinster title last year, first since 2004. Can they go the extra mile and win the All-Ireland this year? Well, just that you're wearing that jersey uh, from 1996. Imagine, like, people talk about, like, how mad Mayo would go if Mayo won the All-Ireland. I think Wexford would be a very, very close second if they won the All-Ireland. Just absolutely fanatical. After the Leinster final last year, the place went absolutely mad. And uh, I'd say they're, it's that sort of a county that most people would be happy for if they made a breakthrough as well. Can they do it? Um, you'd have to look at it and think, like, would Davey still be there if he didn't think they could do it? No, he wouldn't. He obviously has been a massive, massive buy-in from that group. He's there for this year and probably next year. And maybe with the way things have worked out, he might you know, stay another year if things have been going all right because this year was such a kind of a strange year and he hasn't been there that much as well. Um they definitely have the potential to, and you know, take twenty eighteen out of it. Twenty seventeen was hugely progressive. Twenty last year was again hugely progressive. Got got silverware. They were the team aside from Limerick who beat Tip obviously in the Munster final. They absolutely put it put it up to Tip. Didn't make use of numerical advantage and maybe faded and went away from their game plan a small bit at the end. But there's definitely huge potential and from league games and just how they've strengthened their squad. You'd imagine there's a couple of extra lads maybe to come in, the likes of Joe O'Connor, that maybe weren't there before, that in the last 10 or 15 minutes, when they need fresh legs, who are going to not just maintain how they're doing, but drive it to another level. They probably have added that this year. So, yeah, they'll be, they'll be there or thereabouts, definitely. If they're going to have to win, if they're going to win Leinster again, they're definitely going to have to do it the hard way. They're, they're going to have to beat Galway on Halloween night and probably beat Kilkenny in a Leinster final. But um, yeah, they're they're deaf, they're right there. They're probably just just off a Tipperary or a Limerick, but they're very very close. You know, do you remember there was that narrative that Davy Fitz like he has an impact, and then after a couple of years, it kind of wanes. A bit like the whole Jose Mourinho sort of thing, where they say like after three seasons, he's more or less done in a place he. I don't know, maybe he wears out his welcome, whatever it might be. But if you go through Davy Fitz's uh, tenure with Wexford so far, first season, huge progress. Second season, not so good. Third season, Leinster title. Probably should have got to an All-Ireland final, and if they could, uh, no doubt they've relived that game and how they allowed Tipperary to take over and win with 14 men. They've relived it many, many times. But this season, I mean, obviously the championship has yet to be played, but they were really, really good in the league. If you go through the games, they beat Leash, Kilkenny, Dublin, Carlow. Fair enough, they lost to Clare. They'd be disappointed to do so. But they still did qualify for a league quarter final. And if they didn't scrap the semi finals and finals and it didn't just go straight to a Limerick Clare uh, league final, which doubles up as the Munster opener, you know, they'd be in with a chance for silverware. And then you're thinking, geez, this, this team really is building. And like you were saying, there's some of the younger players coming through. I think one of the main reasons that he didn't. Um, that he didn't opt out and you know just decide to finish after three seasons is because the age profile of this team is really really good i mean go through the spine of the team you've liam ryan he's a young man with plenty of years to go matt o'hanlon is probably just at his peak now probably 28 29 30 something like that lee chin late 20s connor mcdonald mid 20s Dio o'keefe late 20s paul morris still got lots of scores in him. like it's a really good age profile and this team is probably like this year and maybe two more years and they're right up at the top level. Now, whether they can keep bringing through players, there's no reason they shouldn't be able to keep bringing through players and stay consistently up to the top level. But I'd say Davy Fitz feels this team isn't far away. 10-3 to to win Leinster, All-Ireland 9-1. to I mean, they're not that far off any team, really. Do I think that they're lacking a little bit in terms of game breakers, you know, someone who can get the goals consistently, like, I don't know, TJ Reid when he's close to goal, Seamus Callanan, Connor Whelan and Joe Canning when he's close to goal obviously he hasn't scored many goals in the last few years because he's been out centre forward but you know the point I'm making do they have enough Patrick Horgan type players as well and this, yeah I think they the know thing. that I think yeah. they know that to be fair I think they know that they don't and they'll get they'll put like try and put good diagonal ball into McDonald when they can and he's unbelievably good in the air and very very dangerous but I think that's why they realise 
that, that they need to have Dermot O'Keefe chipping in, that they need to have all these other guys chipping in from out the field, that Pauly Foley needs to hit one or two from play, that Sean Murphy needs to get forward from wing back. I think that's why they play that the way that they're playing. Like if if Davy had a Joe Canning, I'd say he he could plonk him full forward and, and play a lot around him, but he doesn't he doesn't have him, so he's playing a different way. And uh, the way you meant what you mentioned about their age profile, like Davy realizes that they are at the perfect age and they're at that kind of stage of athleticism where they can keep playing this game and maybe bring it to another level over the next couple of years as we, we've talked in other shows there's no fear of anyone retiring really they're all at the they're all at the perfect age barron picking up an injury he would see um there's obviously been massive development over the last couple of years he'd see another scope for another maybe five or ten percent and if they find that extra five or ten percent and, and you'd be thinking squad wise they're probably edging closer to having a better squad. Do they have the squad? They don't, but it's stronger than it was last year, which might have cost them probably in that last 10 or 15 minutes against Tipperary in the All-Ireland semi-final. They're very, very close. Would you be surprised if Wex- if Wexford won All-Ireland? No, you you would you wouldn't you wouldn't be that, yes, I wouldn't be that I would. surprised. I would. I I, I, would, I I wouldn't be that surprised. To be honest with you, if they, if they won the All Ireland final, um, I I just they're they're there. They just need to find an extra five or ten percent, and there is potential for that to be found. They they're gonna need they're gonna need their big players obviously to play well. They're gonna need that spine that you talked about to play well. When Lee Chin plays well, Wexford invariably play very very well too. Chin, like you're looking at Fanning, uh, Lee Ryan, Matt O'Hanlon. Dermot, Dermot O'Keefe, Lee Chin, Conor McDonald. When when you know three or four of them play well, Wexford are in a great great position to do well. Um, and I, yeah, you just question marks in your head about will they be able to kick on from last year? The fact that the fact that Davy has stayed on would suggest that he would definitely think so. So there's no reason for me to think that that they're not going to kick on. What's progress for them this year? Progress, funnily enough, might be finishing the year without silverware, but getting to an All Ireland final. Getting to a national final would be massive for them. I think Davy was sick enough by the fact that the league didn't go ahead, and I thought, think he thought maybe he could have won a national title even in the league, which would have been given them another boost going into championship. To me, I would say getting to an All Ireland final would be would be progress on last year. Genuinely, I would I would think that because it's somewhere that they haven't been should they haven't been there in in, in twenty four years realistically. So it would be massive progress, I think, to get to that position. Do you honestly think anyone inside the Wexford camp thinks that that would be a good year? They don't. They're obviously not thinking like that. If they're thinking like that, they shouldn't. They shouldn't be there. This is me and you kind of think of what is tangible progress for twenty twenty. I think to get to the biggest, the biggest day in hurling somewhere that these players haven't been would be massive progress. I put it to you this way, right? Do Do you think that they think they've as good a panel as anyone? And do you, like, do you believe they've as good a panel as anybody? I don't believe they have as good a panel as probably a tip panel and probably a Limerick panel, maybe Kilkenny. But I think the way they play can kind of maybe negate that somewhat. They have their system honed to a T. Well, I put it to you like this. If you take Mark Fanning out of that team, they could be in bother. If you take Liam Ryan out of that team, they could be in bother. You take Kevin Foley out of that team, bother. Lee Chin in bother. Conor McDonald in bother. This team is very, very reliant on the spine of that team, more so than any of the other uh, key teams. I, th- I think you can take one or two players out of Limerick, and we will see that now, and they're unlucky that a couple of the absences are going to be in the one area, which is the full back line. That might hurt them. But if you took maybe one of those players out of Wexford, I think it would hurt them more than if you took one player out of Galway or one player out of Tipperary. So are you Kingston. telling me if you took Joe Canning out of the championship, which happened last year, and Galway ended up out of the championship, if you telling me that, that Tipperary uh, didn't have Seamus Canlon, who scored a goal in every game, that that wouldn't be as big of a loss as any of those Wexford lads? Are you telling me that if Kilkenny lost TJ Reid or Colin Fenley, they wouldn't be as big a loss as any of the, the Wexford spine if they lost them? But it's not to say that those players aren't that let's say Seamus Cannon isn't better than every forward on the Wexford team. He obviously is better than everyone and it obviously would hurt Tipperary. I'm just saying that the players that they would have to come in to replace are probably better and deeper deeper squads there. Now you mentioned Galway. This is a Galway team that once Cannon got knocked out last year in terms of the injury, everyone assumed they were gone. They went down and beat Kilkenny in Nolan Park. The first time that the Cats had lost in Nolan Park in the championship for 70 years. Now, do you think you take a key man out of the Wexford team and that's going to happen? You got knocked out of the championship the weekend after. I know, but you're like, any, anyone can be beaten on a, on a given day. They still went down and did that. Do you know, what I'm saying is they're more reliant on having those players there because the backup isn't there. Like, 
Lee Chin is so crucial to that team. You take him out. Who's going to hit the freeze? Who's going to win the primary ball? Who's going to be the guy who can interchange between playing as a sweeper one minute, be up full forward the next? Who's going to snap ball if you don't have Conor McDonald in there? So, you know, I, it's just I think they've got a great spine, but the, the cupboard is fairly bare if you take any of them out of there. Whereas Tipperary, okay, they don't have another Seamus Callan, but overall they've got enough quality that they should be able to mitigate somewhat his loss. Yeah, I still think I still think we haven't seen it, and hopefully we won't see it. That they now, Kilkenny, don't get me wrong, Kilkenny are, are in serious bother if they lose TJ Reid. Um, so that yeah. there's an equivalence there. Yeah, I, we haven't seen it, and hopefully we won't see it that they'll be missing any of these guys. And obviously, Liam Ryan looked like he was going to be missing, and then by all accounts, he was the best player in the Wexford Football Championship when he came back for, for Starlights. Um, hopefully, they won't be missing any. We won't know until they actually are missing someone. But uh, they're kind of. They're kind of a sum of their parts as well. They, they just, everybody knows what they have to do and they play to this kind of style that's unbelievably effective for them. If Lee Chin was missing, would they fi- find a way around it? It's, it'd, be, it'd be a massive, massive loss. I think they, they, they'd find some sort of way around it or change their style or alter their style a bit. Same if they were missing the Conor McDonald. Um, it would just cause them to play maybe just to tinker their style a bit. Hopefully we won't we won't have to deal with that and there'll be no one missing and they'll have, you know, everyone for this kind of championship campaign. It'll be interesting if they don't to see what they do though. Like I'm wondering how do you, how do you think Wexford would get on against Galway? Because to me they seemed like a little bit of a bogey team for them in recent years. Last year the teams drew sixteen points apiece. But other than that, I think Wexford have struggled against Galway. Like the year beforehand down at Wexford Park, I think Galway won that quite comfortably. 2017 in the Leinster final, remember they were both wearing their away jerseys at Croke Park, massive crowd there. And for the first 25 minutes or so, Wexford were really able to keep into the tribe. But after that, like after about a half an hour, you could feel all of a sense, geez, Wexford badly needs half time here. Connor Cooney was going to, going to town in that game. And they really struggled with them. Now, in saying that, obviously, Wexford have developed in the last couple of seasons. That was year one with Davy. But I do think that Galway are a team that caused them an awful lot of trouble. And if you're just talking about that opener, I, I make Galway favourites there, which means a circuitous route for Wexford back through the qualifiers. God knows who you'll meet along the way. So I think it's going to be tough for Wexford in that sense. If they get through that game, they'll go in as favourites against Kilkenny. Now, probably like a point favourite or whatever. But... um. It's such fine margins, such fine margins between what can lead to a brilliant season and what can lead to a tough one. Yeah, just on that, I think last year Wexford realised that they just had to try and negate Galway rather than go at them. I think when when they tried to maybe go at them to some extent the year before, they probably weren't able to live with them. Now, that, now in 17, that was a Galway team going much better maybe than they were going last year. Uh, Galway obviously have a new manager in now. There's probably maybe some question marks about the way, the way they'll play or whether they've had enough kind of time to bet in. Things were starting to gel in Galway just before things locked down. So be interested to see how they come out of that as well. That's the one thing I would say about Wexford and an advantage Wexford have over a, a good a good handful of teams and Galway being one of them. They all know what they have to do. They've all finally honed it over the last four years. Like if they, I'll put it this way, if 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 you took a six month break. And you weren't allowed train and Galway played Wexford in the morning, who would you fancy? I'd fancy Wexford every day of the week. Give me Galway. Knew, Give that, me no, Galway. One hundred percent. Because they know exactly what they have to do. They know what they know they all know the intricacies of their game plan. They they're not going to be wasting ball. They're going to be playing to a system that really, really suits them. Whereas Galway and it looked a bit in the league, it was what way are they playing? Are they trying to play through the lines? Are they trying to play a long ball? I believe from a practice match uh, against Limerick a couple of weeks ago that it was a bit kind of up in the air what type of style they were playing as well. Were they trying to play direct or were they trying to play through the lines? That's what happens when a new manager comes in. He's trying to bed in his philosophies with philosophies that obviously brought them to an all earning title a couple of years ago. So yeah, I would, I would say in that instance, I think Wexford do have an advantage with the way the year has worked out because they know exactly what each one of them knows exactly what they have to do. Whereas some of the Galway lads, and particularly new players that they're trying to bed in, mightn't fit in with you know the system, and there could be a bit of a clash between the way they played and the way they're trying to play now. I put it to you this way: Who has a more intricate style of play, Galway or Wexford? And take into account that we're going into winter season. Uh, the define intricate. Right, who's going to be trying to play the ball around, measure little passes across the back line because maybe they've got more players operating their own half of the team, half the field. 
And we saw this in the Wexford Clare League game. Now it was a bit of a like the wind was absolutely cruel that day, and Clare turned it around the second half, if I remember correctly, and Wexford struggled. So I think Galway are more suited to going long ball if they have to. They don't have Johnny Glynn this year, but there's plenty of players who can win primary ball up there. Connor Whelan, Connor Cooney when he's on form, and remember we, he snapped a few great balls in the county final this year against Turlock Moore. Joe Cannon can obviously win a high ball. Joseph Cooney can. I think they're both teams athletically. They're going to be you know fairly much neck and neck. They'll both be looking to kill each other in the Leinster final semi final, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. But I think Wexford, I I think Wexford's style of play can be disrupted a bit more by the weather, and I think Galway would be more comfortable letting the ball do the work. But that suits them a little bit better the way they set up. They have more forwards who can probably win their own ball. Wexford have some really good players who are suited to the top of the sod. I don't know if there'll be as much top of the sod running going on. So I think from that point of view, that's why I edge Galway in this particular battle, not to mention historically in recent times they're winning those battles. Here's one for you. Who's more likely to win the All-Ireland if they lose that Leinster semi-final clash? I would say Galway are far more likely to win the All-Ireland through the back door than Wexford are because I think Gal- I think Galway will improve as things go on. Whereas with Wexford, I'd say what you see is what you get. If they if they come up a couple of short points short in that second game in that first game, I'm not sure how much they're going to improve. But if they win by a couple of points, I think they could keep to a really high level the whole way through and be there or thereabouts. But I think Galway are the more likely to win through the back door just because I think they're learning on their feet. And I think if they were to lose that Leicester semi final, come through the back door, I think by the time they get to an All Ireland semi final, I think they could have the team that they want. I'll put it to you this way: in a challenge game recently, they had Parik Mannion midfield and Johnny Cohen wing back. Now, to me, that that should be flipped. And there's a couple of other moves that I think it might it might take a half of Championship Parliament for them to find what their best team is. That would be my one worry with Galway. Yeah, but sure, Parik Mannion was playing around the midfield sector during the league, and Johnny Cohen was cornerback for years. So it's, but like the thing is, what do you mean Galway are learning on their feet? They've had the same group of players largely for a number of years. Now we're talking about Wexford here, and we've we've obviously jumped onto Galway a little bit. And if you were to say whose game plan do you think needs more practice, I would say Wexford need to hone that game plan the whole time to keep the players in sync with each other. And after six months out and a few weeks back, maybe they're going to be the ones that are a little bit disjointed coming into this. Can I just say, this is what happens when you find out the night before the Championship Hurling is going to go ahead and you absolutely can't wait for it to start. This is exactly what happens. But just on Wexford, no, I, I understand what you're saying, that they that they have to keep practicing, practicing, practicing. But I think they have it to down to a fairly well-oiled machine now at this stage. Um, I think the, the possibilities are endless enough for them. Uh, I think they're going to be. I think they're going to be there, or thereabouts. But a lot will probably uh, depend on that first game against Galway. What I will say is, Jack O'Connor is a player who could become a really top level player if he keeps the discipline right. He's had a few red cards, club and county over the years. If he gets on top of that, he's a really forceful player and a guy who can run up the centre at you, much like uh, Rory O'Connor, much like Aidan Nolan, as we've seen do it. Lee Chin, of course. So they do have potential to really, really kick on. Will they put up big enough scores, especially against the best teams? That still remains to be seen, but you can't ignore what they did to Tipperary for long spells of that All-Ireland semi-final last year. If they go back again, obviously they wouldn't have pushed up on the sweeper and left all the space in their own back line and effectively gave Tipperary the platform in which to beat them and go long ball and do all the things that you wouldn't associate with how Wexford want to play. So maybe it could be one of those things where you lose one to win one. So what do you think? Heel of the hunt, Wexford. Are we going to see an All Ireland going back down to Slaney side this year? Uh, I don't. I don't see them winning All Ireland. I see them being very, very close. Uh, potentially taking out someone very, very big along the way. But actually winning All Ireland, I, I don't think so. I still think they're a small bit off. I probably. Tip so they're going to fail and... this year, as far as you're concerned. They're going to be a failure this year. Uh, my in my opinion, getting to an All Ireland final is not a failure. So, so will, they, will they get to an All Ireland final, yeah. or will they be a failure? I think, I think there's a fair a fair chance of getting to an All Ireland final. Yeah. Okay, and winning a Leinster title. Uh, to get to an All Ireland final, they're going to have to win a Leinster title, I would think. So, uh, I still think Kenny will win Leinster, uh, because and I think they have a nicer side of the draw. Uh, so I predict no silverware, but possibly an All Ireland final appearance. I predict Galway will win Leinster and I think Wexford can get themselves back to a semi-final but I think ultimately they'll come up short of their own expectations this year. If I'm proven wrong, 
you know what? If Tipperary don't win the All Ireland, I'd have no issue with Wexford winning it because uh, I I actually do enjoy watching them. I think they're great, to be honest. So ultimately, you're saying Wexford will be a failure this year. I think ultimately they will come up short and fail in their own expectations in, in in that sense right so that's it we've previewed wexford let us know your thoughts give us a bash and i'm sure we said plenty of things you disagree with there and if you want to get the jerseys even that ross common one that michael verney's wearing go to orgoretro.com and put in the promo code our game